So one of the more exciting things that I've seen in the industry probably in the last quarter is not necessarily line of coverage or, or captive related, but it's really more in the area of, of collateral relief. So as a lot of brokers know, anytime you get into the alternative risk space, be it captive or high deductible, um, you know, where the, the client's taking on risk and looking to save on premium dollars, you know, overall it works great, but the one big thing thorn in everybody's side is the issue of collateral. So when the carrier issues a policy and the client is taking on risk, ultimately the carrier is responsible for paying those claims. So to make sure that that they get the reimbursement or that the client actually pays the claims, they'll they'll require that insured to post collateral. And that can oftentimes be in the form of cash, but more commonly it's in the form of a letter of credit. And what that ends up doing is, you know, the insured has to put money on deposit at their bank or reduce their revolving line of credit with that bank, and it ties up cash flow. And, you know, the first year is one thing, but then you renew the policy the second year and you get another batch of collateral. And then the third year, maybe it's a little bit smaller, but still yet another, you know, another, you know, batch of collateral on top of that. So you end up with this stacking, you know, letters of credit for a period of years. So, Again, you're tying up a lot of cash, a lot of credit, and then you're also it also makes it difficult to change carriers because you've got this you know big uh, you know you've got this big obligation to them, and then if you want to switch carriers, you got to start all over again with you know a new you know set of collateral with you know whatever carrier you would switch to. So um, it, it reduces some flexibility. So that's that's the issue. And what's emerged is there's programs and products out there where for a fee. Um, these companies will basically post or, or place the collateral for you. So, you know, for a premium to what you would pay in, in interest charges to your bank, they'll turn around and use their cash and, and credit resources to post the collateral on your behalf. Um, and we just had a, we had a client do this. They had call it 10 million plus minus, um, in their captive, tied up in cash and letters of credit to secure their workers' comp and general liability, um, you know, retentions inside the inside the captive, that had built up over you know probably a period of five years, and we underwrote them with one of these programs. Terms came back favorable, and you know the CFO sat down with their broker, the owner, and they decided to move forward with this. So now all of a sudden, the captive is going to get this influx of you know ten million dollars of surplus. Is going to come out of uh, you know out of this restricted account into their uh, into their operating account. They'll be able to invest it. Um, you know, certainly more liquidity to pay claims uh, as they come in. And it was just it was just you know mind blowing. Um, you know, in, in a way, because we just you know had this restricted money we thought was was never going to you know be released. And just you know, with the stroke of a pen, it was uh, you know it was all done. So um, that is by far the you know most interesting thing I've seen in, in a while. And, you know, certainly for the brokers uh, or, or captive uh, consultants out there who have these clients with, you know, these, these big letter of credit positions, uh, definitely something to be, something to be looking at um, and potentially executing on for your client to, to add extra value. Yeah. I just, Jared, to, to piggyback on that, I just pulled up the financials of one of our clients that's going through a sale right now. And on the books, this is before we got involved in it. But on their books right now, they have $714,000 in collateral that's being held by AIG for a 2013 and 14 program. Yeah, and that just goes to illustrate how long these carriers will sit on, on these dollars. Um, you know, certainly losses are immature in the first couple of years. And then, you know, you can understand that. But then, you know, to get you get seven, eight years on. And, you know, sure, there's always the possibility of, you know, tail liability or, or reopening of claims or whatever, um, you know, but oftentimes the amounts, you know, don't quite, you know, settle with reality. Um, and it's just really cumbersome for, for you know, these insureds.